I'm so lucky. I mean, somehow I've managed to build a career out of all this rambling pretension, but um, I, I care very, very much about my primary job, which is to be an entertainer as well as a communicator. I don't yeah. think I'm a, a teacher or a preacher. I'm a, I want people to, I, I have a really basic desire, which is that people should laugh and ideally have a little cry or at least feel the welling of emotion because that's another uh, area I like to play in and I want them to think about some stuff. Um, and if you set your goal to make people laugh and cry and think, you should, as a result, have them walking out feeling like they've had a hell of a night at the theatre, you know. Yeah. And, and, and my nightmare is looking out the audience and seeing someone check their watch, you know. I, I just, I just want to grab people and hold them and I'll do anything it takes. I'll dance, I'll do a stupid funk tune about cheese, I'll play piano at 100 miles an hour, I'll make you laugh, I'll use moments of stillness, I'll use lights and projection, I'll do whatever it takes to keep you with me. Yeah. And I think that's why people come. I, I think it's because it's its own thing. It's you, you don't walk away from my concerts going, oh, that was a bit like, oh, mate, yeah, yeah. last week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I hold people pretty tight and, and try and make sure they're coming with me to get back to our how to communicate with people. It's a seduction, not a not a scream. It's funny you um, the way you define that because I think uh, from someone in the media's perspective, it can be really really hard to define what you do sometimes. You know, like you know, yeah, it's, it's like, but 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 that um, that in a sense is kind of what is so um, attractive about, about what you do from an audience, uh, from an audience's perspective, because it it, it is very unique and it's, it's entertainment, right? And I suppose that um, uh, the last 18 months have maybe uh, kind of challenged maybe some of all all of our preconceptions around access to entertainment and the kind of work you do. How, How have you endured COVID? Well, I mean, I'm very, very lucky in that, you know, because of Matilda and some of the things I've done in the past, I, I can, I, I, you know, if I can't work for a year, I'm not going to end up on the street. And I'm very, very aware of the the privilege of that, the small P privilege, not not the tokenistic capital P privilege. Um, I... I I also think I have an obligation because my work employs a lot of people. I, I found it, I was very anxious about that mm. uh, and I tried to find ways to keep making work. Uh, and we did this live stream of my album and I made a couple of music videos and I kept doing stuff and I'm doing voiceovers for animated films and I'm writing scripts and I'm just generating work. But we, we've all learnt our own lessons. I, I think one thing I've learnt is that everyone asks each other, how have you gone with COVID? And the answers tend to be, the kind of, well, this is how it affected my work. Wasn't it a pain having the kids at home? Yeah. Nearly everyone has a secondary story that they don't necessarily tell, which involves, in my case, a very close relative sick in West Australia who I couldn't get to and, a, and another close relative who had real troubles. And, you know, those stories where the connectivity damages your ability to respond and look after your community. Yeah. And that which I feel a bit emotional about talking, uh, emotional talking about actually, because because I get very stressed uh, about the world. I do my job because I want to I want to grab the world and shake it sometimes, like we all do. And I'm lucky because I have a microphone and fast fingers, so I get to. Yeah. But as I've got older, and my album reflects this, I think I've realised you can't fix the world, and what you have to do is look after the people around you and your circle of responsibility, as they talk about in altruism. You, you need to define it and make sure you're actually being effective, not just anxious online, not just posting your fury online, but actually effective. And COVID damaged our ability to be effective in our communities. And adjacent to that is how much it matters that people gather and enjoy stuff together to bring it back to touring. I don't think, you know, my art is an incredibly important contribution to society, but I do think we have learnt, I hope we've learnt, how much it matters that we can gather and have shared experiences. Um, And to that end, I just cannot wait to get back on the road.